Hi, everyone, and welcome to Inventor's Launchpad Roadmap to Success. I am Carmen Dinesco, your host for today's episode. And today we have a uh, guest who has given over, I mean, 11, 12, 13 years to the inventor industry. He is the president of the Tampa Bay Inventors Council. Uh, he's an inventor himself. And also, you know, in uh, the real life, in the real day, he is a broadcast director. We'll get into that a little bit, and he can explain what that means um, as we progress through our talk today. His name is Wayne Razanin, and I believe he is on the line now. Hey, Wayne, are you over there? I'm right here. Nice to see you. Hey, Wayne, how's it going out there, man? How uh, you uh, survived the holiday? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, avoided blowing up anything, so... Uh, my hands are, are still intact. Uh, you know, I, I learned that uh, at an early age when firecrackers go off in your hand, it hurts. So, uh, you know, tend to avoid doing that anymore. Yeah. For any of you uh, listeners, um, we are uh, recording this uh, podcast the day after July 4th, uh, 2017. So uh, we were just talking a little bit about the holiday. We just got off uh, a long weekend and Rain, Wayne and I were we're talking a little bit before, before we started the interview. Wayne is the president of In, Intended Inc., which is his, I think it probably uh, a company based around his invention. And also, as I said uh, earlier, he's the president of the Tampa Bay Inventors Council. Um, Wayne, before we get into that, uh, you are a, you're a Florida resident. Uh, I, would, I, I think I read that on your resume you sent over to me. Well, yeah, I've been, uh, been here for a uh, majority of my life. So uh, I originally uh, from New York, so you can oh. tell from my New York accent. But <laughs> were, you, uh, were you always an inventor or you always like taking things apart and breaking them as like me when I was a kid? Always curious. Always, uh, you know, my, my dad was uh, really Mr. Fix-It and uh, he, would, he would take apart TVs and uh, dishwashers and when we would go on vacation and uh whenever we would get to you know relatives or friend's house or something like that my dad you know one of his first questions is all right what's not working uh. and and he and him and the you know typically the other dad would would go into the garage or go into the and they would open it up and fix it you know he was he was just that kind of guy and he always wanted to help people out uh you know did it for the love of, uh, of helping people. And, you know, I, I think that, that kind of, uh, spread, you know, I love, I love being able to tweak things and fix things and, and help people out too. So. Great. Yeah. It's kind of a, kind of a lost art. I mean, as people, they seem to more specialize in certain things now, you know, people still come to your home and fix things. But as you said, as you're talking about that, it's kind of a lost art to be that handyman all around guy yep. and just yep. come in and fix everything which you know it is still needed but i don't think that those those guys are out there anymore yeah i, I replaced my first car engine when i was 17 so you know learned a lot from dad and uh you know it was nice having the tools and, and that kind of stuff too not not that we had money but uh you know we were able to to put together what we did you know and and he he got into the electronics uh all the components and, and stuff like that. And that was, that was more my brother's forte. My brother got more into that. I, I didn't, uh, didn't dive into the uh, electronics as much. Yeah. Well, I mean, cars, electronics, the, uh, you know, obviously the car has some electronics, but back then, you know, oh, yeah. as old as me, there, there wasn't <laughs> too many electronics in those vehicles that no. we could pull apart. <laughs> no. So that's good. So now you're living in Florida, you're living in the sunshine state. I'm glad. Um, I also uh, moved into Florida, you know, back in uh, 2000 uh, area vicinity, and uh, I just love the uh, the warm weather. Just uh, glad to be down here in the in the Tampa Bay area. Now, you are the um, the president of the Tampa Bay Inventors Council, which uh, I think is one of the uh, longest um, running inventors um, councils or inventors groups probably in the country. Is that correct? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are some that have, uh, you know, can claim that they've been around longer. Um, I, I think that uh, we could probably, if we wanted to really put a stake in the ground, we can say we've probably held more meetings than uh, most other inventor groups because uh, during the, the course of our uh, almost 34 years, we hold meetings twice a month 
Um, most, most groups only meet once a month. So if, if we really want to put a stake in the ground, we can say, well, we've probably held more inventor meetings than, than any of the other groups. Um, but uh, yeah, other than December, November and December, we only hold one meeting on those dates because of the holiday, obviously. But uh, 22 meetings a year for uh, 30, 33 and a half years. Yeah, I, I think we've, uh, we've probably probably topped out quite a bit on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you've been at the helm for almost half the amount of time it's been in existence, which is awesome. I mean, being able to donate your time, um, your experience, your knowledge to help inventors, which we, you know, inventors, I'm an inventor, you're an inventor. We all need help. There's, there's yep. no doubt about it. And having that go-to groups uh, is, is phenomenal. You, do you have any people that um, connect uh, remotely or that, you know, that they have to come to the meeting uh, live? <laughs> Well, it's funny. It's funny you should, should ask. Uh, um, one of uh, one of our newer members, um, who's actually a product developer, uh, he's been uh, he's been out of town for the last couple of meetings, and so I've been using my phone to to go on Skype or or just you know connect through the the phone so that he could listen in. Um, so really, haven't done a whole lot of the uh, the remote meeting stuff, but I, I think it's it's probably coming. Um, we, we, we really want to get members to come to the meetings and we share things kind of exclusively at the meetings. I, I do a, uh, uh, an opportunity list. And if you are a paid member, if you're, a you know, uh, in good standing, uh, we'll email it. So you don't have to come, but, uh, anybody that comes to the, the meeting, you know, they've got access to it and they can, they can read it and take pictures or, or whatever. And, and they've got the links to, uh, engage in all the contests and stuff that uh, that we find going around on around that that can help inventors wow so. that's uh yeah and, and and we'll talk about this later we were talking earlier about the technology and how it has advanced in all different industries obviously oh yeah um people that want to join an invention group now and if you're not in the tampa bay area um find a group that's close to you. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, if you are a first time inventor or a new inventor, seek out some help from an inventors group and a council or somebody in your area. There are a lot of them probably spread out throughout the United States. Absolutely. I wish there were more, um, but, uh, and also probably throughout the, the world. Uh, and wait, do you get people who are, and I don't even like to use the word, Kind of fearful to approach an invention group as because they have an idea they don't really want to tell too many uh -huh. people about it or or how do they get there if they are fearful and, and how do you make them feel comfortable with joining the group well you know that absolutely we we definitely get people that are are concerned about uh revealing what they've got and and we we don't press anybody to tell us what they're what they're working on or what they're doing and and Quite frankly, we tell them right at the at the beginning of the meeting that uh, uh, this is a public forum. If you disclose your invention here, um, that would that would technically start the clock, and you would have to have uh, your invention um, filed within one year of any kind of public disclosure. Um, so we we don't we don't press people to to tell us what they're, they're working on or, or give us any details on it. So it's uh, completely open to, you know, if, if you want to share, if you've got some kind of uh, formal protection, uh, if you want somebody to sign a, uh, a non-disclosure agreement, you know, that can be done afterward or something. Um, but uh, if you haven't, have you, if you haven't filed a, um, for a provisional patent application or, uh, or, or filed for the patent in, in full, then, you know, we, we advise people to keep their secrets all secret because um, uh, once upon a time, we were a, a nation of uh, first to file. I mean, uh, first to invent. And now we've become uh, first to file. So uh, it's a lot easier for, for inventors to get ripped off and not have any recourse. Um, the, uh, you know, we're we're pretty active and concerned about some of the, uh, the patent laws that have uh, transpired. And we try to get our, uh, our members informed about what, what's going on. And, and, you know, we want them to be active in uh, addressing some of the litigation that's going on in Congress and talk to their senators and talk to their congressmen 
and make sure that uh, we don't take what was uh, the uh, the spark of genius in the United States, the thing that, that made this country great for over 200 years, and flush it down the toilet just so that we can be just like uh, all the other countries. Um, you know, that that spark that, that gave the individual the right to profit, um, you know, was unheard of in the world. Prior to that, it was, uh, you know, you came up with a great idea and the king would say, okay, well, Duke Henry is gonna, gonna build that and, uh, you know, thank you very much and go away or I'll cut your head off. Mm -hmm. And so uh, giving, that indivi giving individuals that ability to profit from their ideas has been huge in the United States. And that's, that's why we've become the, the innovative world country that we have. And unfortunately, some of the litigation, the uh, American Invents Act, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of patents are getting overturned. And some of them are, are getting overturned strictly f by a judge. You know, one judge without any formal review, without any, any argument, will just look at it and say, nah, I don't think that should have gotten a patent. That's wrong, and so we're, you know, we're doing what we can to to help support uh, organization, you know, uh, that that address those situations and, and try to correct it. Yeah, and this is the, your your explanation and what you just talked about is exactly why people <laughs> who have an idea, have an invention, should seek out a club mm -hmm. uh, such as yours because that little bit of information, which is all, which is huge. I mean, you could have. I know that, that you could have talked for two hours just on that <laughs> because it is so important. And it's one, of, yeah. it's one of the things and one of the reasons why people even outside this country want to come here or wanted to come here and, and get a patent here because it was so important. It, yep. it was worth something. And uh, these laws are being changed real quick and without the innovators, without the inventors' real interests in mind, it seems like. Um, so it's, it's important that, uh, that inventors, that innovators seek out help, uh, as we always talk about on the show. No one does anything um, which is truly important by, the, by themselves. They, yeah. they need help. They need a team behind them. They need people to help. And uh, I'm really glad that you guys are around. I know that we've come to some of your meetings. A lot of our clients that come to us have been to your meetings. They, mm -hmm. they learn the right way to do things. Um, uh, I make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. I don't even sure. like the word. But you learn from them because you have people like yourself. And I really applaud what you guys have been doing, especially for the time that you've been doing it. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I think it was, uh, it was either Bill Gates or Google who said that uh, they're not really worried about the next thing from Samsung or, or any of the competition. They're worried about what's taking place in individual garages around the world. That's, that's the innovations that change the world that upset the balance and and that's that's why companies like google and intel and you know um uh, all all the big big corporations are are really kind of pressing for the the litigation that that prevents the individual from from coming up and and being successful so we're, it's it's a little disheartening that you know they they climb to the top and they want to pull up the ladder you know and uh so we're, we want, we want to make sure that uh, the little guy's got a chance to, to get on board. Yeah, and absolutely. We're all, we're all little guys when we're starting out. And yep. uh, like I said, it's uh, having people like yourselves uh, being able to get that information out to the masses. I know that you were just, um, you just spoke um, uh, in the Tampa Bay area at Ignite. Was that something that is related to innovation or invention? Well, Ignite is a is a really kind of cool uh, organization. Something I um, when it first started up, I I embraced and I I did the first videos for them, and you know really wanted to to encourage it. Uh, Ignite is um, passionate speakers talking about you know whatever it is that makes them passionate. Uh, it could be any topic from from mental health to science to you know astrology to you know whatever you know, whatever it is that uh, really kind of irks you. And the way the presentation works is you have uh, five minutes, you get uh, 20 PowerPoint slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. And so uh, um, there's a slide that's up before your presentation and uh, then your, your slides come up, you do your, your five minutes and then two slides will come up 
after you're done and then then, then the next pr presentation starts so it's just rapid fire uh we did this um last thursday uh and so we had um 21 speakers uh you know with a, a half an hour intermission in between but uh, a wonderful event really really great really positive stuff and uh some some really uh heady uh discussions um going on too my presentation was uh talking about um building a hyperloop uh from tampa to orlando uh if you're not familiar with a hyperloop it's essentially a tube system um kind of a pneumatic tube like you see at the bank or on uh, uh futurama or the jetsons if you're if you're as old as me um but uh this is more of a, a vehicle traveling in a tube and uh, my my presentation was talking about doing a hyperloop using renewable resources green energy and uh, the power of of falling water to to help generate the electricity create the uh, the pressure and and you know utilizing different aspects of uh, of that and so after after I did the ignite presentation uh, you know it's it's an idea that I want I don't want to keep to myself so I submitted it to the uh, create the future contest uh, that's that's also going on I've uh, I've submitted uh, three other times I, I've made the top 100 once before for my keyboard um, but uh, you know it's it's the idea of if the idea has merit then let's get it out there and, and let's let other people uh, toy with the idea and make use of it and see if uh, see if we can develop something <laughs> it's pretty interesting. That's one thing that I have noticed um, in the last several years in the invention industry is that a good number of them are about renewable energy or mm -hmm. some type of energy device. Um, not only from this country, we get submissions of inventions from all over the world. Don't, don't forget perpetual energy. <laughs> exactly. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it just seems to me that, you know, the mind shift is changing. I was wondering if you um, see that. Uh, at, at the council, and obviously, I know that you're in a, you help inventors personally. But if you see that, where a lot of people are are looking to really help the world, um, I think that that's probably been going on since uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin, you know, did the Franklin stove. There have always been inventors that that do what they do because they want to benefit the the world. Uh, so I don't know that there's you know a tremendous shift. But um, yeah, there there is a, a an altruistic aspect to inventing. Some people invent, you know, because they want to retire. Some people in, invent because you know they want to make the the world a better place. And and some people invent because you know it puts them in the garage and away from their spouse. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving away the secret. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, people invent for all all sorts of different reasons and. Um, a lot of them don't go anywhere. You know, the, uh, um, the phrase is um, first, first they ignore you, then they mock you, and then they attack you, and then you win. And there are a lot of, a lot of inventors that, you know, they don't like being ignored and that, that's when they quit, you know, or uh, when they get mocked, that's, that's when they quit. Or when they're attacked, they say, you know, hands up, I, I quit. It's it's the inventors that uh, that face the outrageous slings and arrows of outrageous fortune that, that uh, persevere, and you know hopefully uh, have some uh, semblance of uh, success at the end of the uh, end of the road. Nothing's guaranteed, you yeah. know. And uh, you know one of the things I I tell our inventors that. You know, if you're if you're coming in this just to make money, just to be uh, successful, um, you know, there are, are a lot of easier ways to make money and a lot lot more sure ways of being successful. Uh, so if you're if you're going to get into the invention game, do it because you want to enjoy the ride, and it's a hell of a ride. So it's 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 a lot of fun, and you'll meet a lot of people, you'll do a lot of things, you'll you'll see a lot of stuff, and so inventing is terrific. You know. But uh, you know you got to be there for the ride. You know, it's, don't don't be looking at the horizon the whole time. You know, enjoy the view that you're at now. So, oh, I agree. And and 
I want to get into your invention, which I think is super cool in a couple of minutes, which is, I, I think it's amazing. Um, as we're talking about this, do you see um, a specific type of thing or item or maybe multiple that are roadblocks for inventors that as, as they come up with their inventions and are moving through phases, um, is there something that is the largest issue that they run into? Um, and if so, are there ways to, that, that you have learned to maybe help our listeners to get around that, that largest hurdle? Uh, well, you know, of course, largest hurdle would have to be financing. You know, most, most people don't have the money to, to build prototypes, to, you know, to follow suit and, and develop the, the kind of stuff that, that they imagine. Um, you know, they're, the uh, whole angel investor idea, friends and families and fools, um, one way to get money, but, uh, you know, no, nobody wants to uh, alienate all of their, their family members and not be invited to Thanksgiving ever again. Um, so it's a lot of it is, uh, you know, looking for the angel investor that that's really kind of moved on the the venture capitalists that that used to be interested in early stage stuff now the venture capitalists only want second round stuff they they they're moved away from it and so the angel investors kind of moved up the up the chain too they're they're less interested in something that's just an idea and so um to fill in that that resource that gap there uh crowdfunding has uh has sprung up so you've got Indiegogo and Kickstarter and, you know, only about 800 other <laughs> crowdfunding uh, groups that are out there. Um, but they're, you know, that's, that's the venue that uh, some people try to choose and, and, and go ahead and do. And it's not an easy course either. Um, you know, um, it, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I, I tell people don't, don't take yourself too seriously because nobody else will um of course uh if if you're asking for somebody for money they're going to take you very seriously and and at that point you had better be serious um you know because uh, what they want to know is how am i going to get my money back and how am i going to get more money out of this operation so if, if you don't have those answers if uh if your answer is well um well, i'm going to use your money and i'm going to build inventory and then i'm going to see if it sells that's that's not a great argument, you know. You've you've got to have uh, you've got to have uh, all the details about, you know, who wants to buy your product, why they want to buy it, and how it's going to be the the next big seller. So, no, that's awesome advice um, because yeah, I I agree with you. I and mean, you just you know the days of saying, hey, I have this idea, give me a whole bunch of money. I think that has gone yeah uh, gone wayward. Is there a certain point? Um, that an inventor has to take his product um, to say a certain uh, phase or stage before they should really start looking for funding or or for an investor. Obviously, friends and family, that's different because it can be an idea. Mm -hmm. But um, if you were going to go to seed funding or an angel investor, um, is there a certain point that you should reach before you'd, you'd start doing that? Well, I, I mean, I would say yes, but then, then you've got stuff like, um, uh, oh, what is it, uh, Magic, Magic Leap, oh, yeah. who uh, just got, uh, you know, $1.4 billion in, uh, in funding or something ridiculous like that, and they haven't produced a product yet. Uh, you know, they, they did it with uh, promotional videos, and they, they got, uh, you know, a lot of people really excited about it. And so, um, having, uh, having friends in high places helps for sure. But, uh, generally you want to have, um, your proof of concept. You want to at least have a prototype, have something that, that is a semblance of, uh, yeah, this will work and, and this is why it'll work. And this is the industry that needs this. Um, you know, we, we tell inventors, um, don't invent something because you think it's a cool idea. Invent something that has a, an element um, that somebody needs. Look for a pain point, something that is painful for people, that causes an issue, that causes a problem. The bigger the pain, the better. 
and come up with a solution for that, then you've got your, your target market. Um, you know, you've got your audience that, that will be interested in your product. Uh, no pain, no gain, basically. <laughs> the great part about this is this information, you could tell you've been doing this for years. This information just flowing out as you're talking. You don't even have to think about it because obviously you live it daily. Yeah. I know that you are an inventor and I love the, the, the name of your company, uh, Intended. It's the Input Nomenclature 10-Digit Interface Device. I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> a little geeky. It's a great little name. I love the name when you said send me information over. I was like, that is really a cool name, you know. And uh, obviously, you spent a little bit of time thinking about it, which is good. Um, you and I both have probably seen, you know, uh, inventors or people come up with the name that you just say, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's talk a little bit about your invention and uh, sure. maybe can give the listeners. Um, and if you are viewing uh, on YouTube or on our website, uh, you'll get to see what the invention is. But we will kind of obviously are going to explain a little bit, too. And, and maybe tell us how you came up with it as you're kind of going through it. Sure. Um, well, uh, basically, I've, I've reinvented the keyboard. Um, I was taking a typing class the first day of class. The, the teacher said, you know, or one of the students asked, why are the keys where they are on the keyboard? And the teacher said, well, uh, according to Mavis Beacon teaches typing, they were arranged that way to slow people down so that the mechanical hammers didn't jam on a keyboard. It's not exactly the truth. That's actually kind of a myth because um, the key, if that were the truth, then the keyboard would have had to been redesigned. Uh, it hasn't. It's the same design that came out uh, in 1869. So we're, we're talking before Edison's light bulb, before Tesla's AC power, and before Bell's telephone. So the QWERTY keyboard has been around that long. It's, it's almost 150 years old. And um, the, uh, the couple of reasons in uh, the QWERTY keyboard, the, the way it is designed, one, Charles Latham Scholes, who invented it, was a, a typesetist. So he, you know, he wanted to keep blocks of type, you know, similar to where... Uh, typesetters would utilize it. That, that's who he envisioned as his target market was typesetists. Uh, it was going to replace typesetists for, uh, for putting uh, type on, on paper. And, uh, and then um, all of the, the vowels for, or, I mean, all of the letters for the word typewriter are on the top row. Uh, that's why, you know, all of the vowels are on the top row except for A. A is not in typewriter. So he buried A underneath Q and W because you're not going to use Q and W very often. So A would have a, a free throw for it. So kind of, it's kind of some crazy ideas. And I thought this is, this is really nuts. There's got to be something that makes more sense. I found the Dvorak keyboard, which just rearranged the keys a little bit and uh, was uh, tinkering in the garage one day, holding onto a ball. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to move your hands? You know, kind of lamenting the fact that, you know, when I type, I'd, I'd hit two keys or I'd hit the wrong key. If you didn't have to move your hands, how would that work? And I said, well, all right, well, you got 10 fingers, two opposable thumbs. So if it, you do one, one key for 10 letters, hold one thumb for eight, and then hold the other thumb for eight. Eight and eight is 16 plus 10 is 26. Wow. So it's uh, the Latin alphabet right there. And, uh, you know, I thought, wow, that's the, it's amazing that works like that. Somebody must have uh, come across that, and I went online and searched and didn't find anything. Uh, figured that it had to be more than just the letters, so I figured, all right, well, where am I going to put the enter, the space, the backspace? And, and so much of that just kind of fit in with where I originally put the letters, like uh, T for tab, C for comma. All of that just fell into place so so amazingly. I said, wow, it's it's almost like, this is really the way typing was intended. And then you know, I, I came up with the name of the company is typing the way it's intended. You know, it's the input. Input is, of course, input. Nomenclature is the science of naming things. 10 is the, the number of keys. Digit, inter, you know, digits. Yeah. Interface device. So it's an input nomenclature, 10 digit interface device or intended. And, uh, I brought a couple of uh, samples. This was the uh, the very first device that I built based on the uh, the the premise of it. 
Uh, if you uh, if you look up the patent, that's the image that's on there. It's a uh, it's just a wooden keyboard. We did you know like large piano keys so that it would be one key for each each hand. And um, you know then uh, it evolved over time. Nothing nothing stays quite the same. And and now this is the the actual product that uh, that we're selling on Amazon. It's called the Deca Text. So Deca Deca for ten and text for texting. Uh, txt and so it's uh, a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z wow space backspace enter period question mark exclamation tab comma apostrophe so you've got um 108 keystrokes uh bluetooth low energy and uh you know uh, we're we're selling them now on amazon getting ready to uh to uh revise it probably go to uh, version two and I'll probably have to do a Kickstarter to, to get the money for, for doing all of that. So I cannot believe when you just held that from the first version to what you held up, how small, yep. but that is a working product. You're selling that product on Amazon. Yep. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Actually, um, uh, when we were playing with different designs, I did one kind of similar to this uh, showed it at the CTIA show in the uh, wearables, uh, wearables in motion. Um, unfortunately, the uh, the artist that was walking it out on the stage to show everybody was wearing a bikini, so nobody even looked at the the keyboard at all. Uh, and then uh, one other design that I did, um, we we took the interface and we wrapped it around an Xbox 360 controller. Wow! And so that uh, the idea is you'd be able to type and play your game all at the same time and uh, still USB at the time and the uh, distributors loved it people loved it but um, Microsoft and Sony were selling keyboards for thirty dollars and the distributor was like well can you get it get it close to thirty dollars I, I, I can't even make it for thirty dollars you know so uh, so that's it's one of those ideas that I'd love to pursue but I'm afraid it's on hold until uh, until we can, you know, get some kind of a win behind the sales on that one. Yeah, no, I mean, just think how far you've come with that. I mean, I'm still in in awe when you held up that that finished product. Are you making that is uh, that U.S. based? Where's the manufacturer? Yeah, yeah, built right here in Florida. Um, and uh, you know, we're primarily we're looking a target market for uh, people that either have lost a limb, um, somebody that's. Uh, um, low vision, so they can't really see a uh, touchscreen too terribly well. Um, but we're also looking at uh, virtual reality because you know once you got that goggle on, uh, how do you control the computer? How do you uh, interface? How do you do a search and stuff like that? Um, right now, what they're doing is they've got a little thing where you, you point and you click, and that's that's miserable, you know. And uh, if you're searching for movies on Netflix and you have to, you know arrow this way and arrow down and click and then arrow up and arrow. it's, it's, it's a nightmare. And so we think that this product can, can help uh, solve a lot of those issues. Wow. So I'm still, I still, I got to get my hand just to test it. I mean, it is so cool looking. Um, so a target market, if you were going to say this would be my target market, I mean, I could see it for, um, for like you said, either maybe even in special needs or, or lost a limb or something like that. Mm -hmm. but movement, it cuts down the movement. I don't have yeah. to have both hands typing. I can actually, I mean, how, what kind of time frame would it take if, if I got that in my hand and I said, I'm going to learn how to use this? Um, you know, is, is it a huge difference, a huge change or, or pretty quick? Um, you know, you, you, it's a different type of skill. So you don't lose your, you know, if you're a fast QWERTY typer, it's completely different skill. It's it's not that muscle memory, not the same. So uh, you can carry on both skills at the same time, um, and it's it's really because it's alphabetical in nature. It's it's really a quick learn. Uh, mastering it, of course, is is going to take a little bit of practice. And you know, when I tell you that uh, out of ten keys, there's 108 keystrokes. You know, with all the F keys and and everything else in there. Uh, it's going to take a little bit, but as you can see, oh, I don't know how uh, how well you can see that. Uh, the label has uh, 96 keystrokes on it. Uh, it's all color coded so that 
You know, you don't have to carry something around in order to find out how, how do I make a, a, a less than symbol or a greater than symbol or a percent sign that they're all printed on the label and it's color coded so you can you can see how to do it. That way you don't have to carry something around. Of course, the object is to, to type with one hand. You can type while you're walking. Uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the emphasis is uh, not sitting anymore. They say sitting is the new, uh, new smoking. So if you're going to be up and moving around, having a, a one-handed keyboard that you're able to, to keep moving in, you know, maybe a gyro mouse or something like that so that you could, could search stuff. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a new way of doing things. It's, uh, you know, it's a new world. Yeah. Well, the great part about it is, I mean, I've been typing on, on keyboards since the mid nineties and I still screw up when I'm typing. So to me, learning something that's new, it, 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 it can't be any worse than what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm right. still hunting and pecking on a keyboard. <laughs> I've been doing it for, you know, over sure. 20 years. Yeah, so absolutely. That's the great part about what you're explaining. It's just a new way of doing things. But I walk a lot. Um, and as you were talking about that, I mean, I keep my hand down and having that in my hand and being able to, to walk. Compose an email or it's amazing. Just, just, you know, to jot notes on your thoughts. Um, you know, I also built it into gloves. So you had had little buttons on the fingertips and uh the idea was uh if you were a skin diver you know you could be taking notes uh you're just typing on your legs um and uh i actually did a uh a presentation over at the kennedy space center um for a whole bunch of rocket scientists showing them how they could type with gloves so that was you know I, when i said you know enjoy the journey uh, enjoy where it's going to take you you know that's that's one of the places that it took me and i went to uh to finland and and uh engaged uh, novel concepts in uh keyboards for uh the uh, uh human computer interactions mobility uh hosted by nokia and it was it was really neat you know was, was, yeah yeah inventing inventing can take you lots of different places you know and uh you know going to ces uh we did a did a booth at ces unfortunately at the time i had engineers that said oh yeah yeah we'll we'll have it we'll have it done in time and uh you can throw money at engineers and if uh if it's over their head that it, it didn't work so uh, we we wound up at ces i had one device that was working bluetooth and uh, they couldn't even duplicate it. They couldn't even get the other ones working. So unfortunately, I, I lost a lot of time and money on some engineers. And fortunately, I, I was able to find some other engineers that were able to, to do it. But uh, when, you've, when your resources are, you know, when you're bankrolling everything yourself, um, losing, losing time and money is, is painful. Yeah. And for all you inventors that are out there and uh, inventing a product, a plastic product or something that doesn't move, but something that, that Wayne is creating, it's an expensive undertaking. There, yeah. is, there is no doubt about it. Every little change, every little update. I mean, you're talking some, some big changes. It's expensive. So you're, I, I, I applaud how far you've made it so far. I mean, you actually have a working product. You're manufacturing it here in the U.S. I mean, there's not too many people that have taken a product as far as you have. Yeah, well, you know, and uh, that's, uh, whether it's successful or not, I can rest easy in, in knowing that, you know, I didn't think about it and say what could have been. I, I, I actually did it and, and, and put it out there. Um, not giving up yet. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see whether or not I can find the, the, the magic ingredient that, that makes it uh, popular. So uh, now do you have inventory? Um, some of our viewers want to try to get your product or purchase it. They can go on Amazon and I've got about a dozen left. Uh, not too many more. Okay. So, you know, if you, if you're interested in the first generation of a, uh, of a new technology, then, uh, you know, grab it quick, uh, $125 on Amazon. So, you know, not, not the cheapest keyboard you can get for sure, but uh, if you look at competing keyboards that are, are similar, it's called a chord keyboard. Uh, it's, the competition would be uh, the BAT keyboard, B-A-T. Uh, there's also the Twiddler, uh, which is now on Twiddler 3, 
Um, they're both uh, about two hundred dollars, and uh, and then there's there are other keyboards. The uh, the one-handed um, uh, QWERTY, uh, half QWERTY, I think they call it, um, almost six hundred bucks. So uh, so we're it's relatively competitively priced if you, if you consider the the actual market. For yeah, it. it is. That that's great. And you know, a lot of people that are portable and are going mobile, if they're thinking about getting a product, definitely. I mean, look into yeah. it. There's no reason not to. I mean, cool. that's a great product. You well, know, if you're a road warrior and you don't have enough room in the in the in the uh, coach seating, you yeah. know, to have something that you can just keep right there in your hand and and be able to type without having to, you know, do one of those things and and get your elbows in everybody's way. Uh, also, you know, if, if you've got, um, ALS, you don't have that broad motor skills, you can't move your hands out, but you can keep them in close to you. You'd be able to, to na navigate it and, and be able to use it too. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a Bluetooth device. So even if you were just doing a, um, PowerPoint presentation and you wanted to change the slides, you know, you could advance the slides, you could do an alt tab to a, to a window and open up a website. And so there are lots of different things you can do with a keyboard, obviously. No doubt about it. Now, we're getting a little low on time. Is one one question, obviously, before we go. So you talked about going to CES, and you mentioned um, shows. Do you recommend if an inventor? Um, it seems like there's shows for every product. Do you recommend an inventor should go maybe to one or two shows before they get either too far into their invention to see what's out there, and maybe there's some competing devices. Or Absolutely. Get, their, get out there and, with their product and maybe pick up either in investment, sales, or licensing. Is, is, it, is it good to visit those shows? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you're going to meet so many people. You're going to meet uh, people on the, on the plane, on the bus. You know, it's, an, it's incredible the amount, amount of people that you can meet. Just uh, And then going booth to booth and, and seeing what other people are doing and, and saying, well, you know, here's here's my idea on how I believe it can be incorporated in with your idea or how it's the perfect product for your distribution company or something like that. Uh, that that's an inv invaluable. Um, you really need to, to be able to get out and do those sorts of things. Now there are, are opportunities where you can do that for free. Uh, there are, uh, we've got just right now coming up, uh, the Orlando Maker Faire is, uh, is coming up. Uh, they're just started uh, accepting applications. I think it's through August that they'll be accepting them. Uh, so if you look for the Orlando Maker Fair and uh, put in an application, you can get a table for free, set it up, you know, show your stuff, get people to come by and, and you know, fill out a survey, what they like, what they don't like. Maybe you'll have a giveaway or something like that. If you want to sell your product, I think it's $100 for the two days of the event. So it's, it's really, you know, a great, great opportunity to, to test market. Uh, there's also the uh, New York Maker Fair is, uh, is in September. The Orlando Maker Fair is going to be October 21st and 22nd, I know, because the 21st is my birthday. Okay. So I, I, I haven't decided whether or not that's what I want to do for my birthday yet. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the New York one, uh, the San Francisco one just uh, took place. If you're not familiar with Maker Fair, uh, look it up. It's it's tremendous. It's it's makers. It's people that do things that build things, and and that would be one free opportunity. Uh, but uh, there's also the um, oh the hardware show in Vegas, the CES. If you can get to that, I've been to uh, E3 um, out in California. You know, brought the key, brought the deck, the uh, tech skin. Uh, out to CES uh, E3 rather, and uh, you know, got lots of lots of great reactions. Bring a camera, um, record people's reactions because that's that's marketing gold. You know, you want to you want to get people to to give you their their honest opinions. You know, don't don't press them to to say, um, you know, no no scripted stuff. You know, you you want it to be honest. Because that's that's really where where it counts. Yeah, and, and you know, I where you're going with this is before you put your life savings, before you order fifty thousand units. Oh yeah. Before you develop it, get out there and get some feedback on your idea, on your product, and 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 you know, hopefully Wayne will back me up on it. 
don't fall in love with your idea. Do it as a business. It's great to have an invention. It's great to have an idea. We all love ideas. But if you're going to put money into it, make sure that there's a need for your product out there. Your, your garage is not for inventory. Don't do that. There's, there's too many people that say, oh, well, you know, let's, let's get a thousand of these things because it's cheaper that way. No. Uh, you know, 100, 100 at a time, if, if that. Um, you know, just keep it, keep it easy. Don't, don't, don't get divorced over it because that's really expensive. Yes, no doubt about it. Now, Wayne, we're going to wrap up a little bit. Um, you have so much to give. I mean, this time has gone by so quickly. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you, they had some questions for you, they wanted to maybe hear more about uh, the Inventors Council, how should they get in touch with you? Oh, sure. Okay. Well, um, uh, if, you, if you're interested in looking at the DECA text, you can look at that for uh, DECA text, D-E-C-A-T-X-T dot com. Uh, is one website or intended.com is another uh, for the um, and there's there's contact uh, information on on those pages and for the inventors council uh, we're tbic.us so tampa bay inventors council tbic.us somebody else had the dot com unfortunately so but uh yeah great great uh, and that's, uh, that's where you can get a hold of us. And like I say, we have meetings uh, twice a month. That's great. Uh, it literally helps people probably get out there since it's twice a month. Um, and uh, all of the information, everything Wayne uh, has talked about, uh, all the contact information, the websites will all be available uh, on the Inventors, um, uh, Inventors Launchpad website, our show notes. Um, if you're driving or you don't want to stop to write that stuff down. And, uh, you know, again, if you have a question, reach out to Wayne. The guy has been doing this for so long. He's got the Inventors Council. There's no reason to think that you have to go this invention route alone. There's people out there that will help you. There's people out there that will give you advice. You don't have to take it, but they will. Um, so, so don't use fear to stop you from talking about your idea or getting help. Uh, Wayne, thank you so much for being on the show today. Your invention is awesome. I'm going to go on Amazon right now and take a look at it, by the way. Um, and, uh, and all the information, everything you gave is great. I, I again, applaud you for being uh, on the Inventors Council, being the president for over 13 years, helping people uh, move their products forward. Uh, it's, it's really a, a great commitment that you made. Well, Carmen, thank you so much for, uh, for inviting me on. And, uh, you know, we, we love you guys. Uh, love when you guys come out and uh, do presentations for us too at uh, the Inventors Council. So, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have, uh, good to have these resources. You know, Tampa Bay is, is rich, is a rich area. This is the birthplace of home shopping and, and so much more and commercials and infomercials. And, um, you know, it's, it's a hotbed. So we love being here. No, I agree. And I thank you very much. And, uh, we'll see you soon, Wayne. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.